A group of SpaceX software engineers who hold various leadership positions in the Starlink team participated in a very enlightening Reddit Ask Me Anything session on May 15th. They gave us a deep look into the jaw-dropping software that runs on the Starlink network and discussed everything from Starship and Starlink to working at SpaceX. One Reddit user who had previously updated cloud servers wanted to know how difficult it must be for SpaceX to push updates out to an entire constellation of satellites. Natalie Morris, the engineer in charge of software test infrastructure for Starlink satellites, went ahead and elaborated on the entire software and firmware update process. According to Natalie, SpaceX tries to roll out new software builds to its entire fleet of assets, which includes ground stations, user terminals, Wi-Fi routers, and satellites at least once per week. Every device is periodically checked in with SpaceX servers to see if it's supposed to fetch a new build, and if one is available, it'll download and apply the update during an ideal time that minimizes impact on users. This means that that software engineers can easily test builds on a small pool and move to much larger deployments by changing a few configurations in a database. One Starlink asset can contain dozens of separate computers, and SpaceX has designed its software system in such a way that each asset updates automatically by first fetching a new package to a central node and having all of the other computers fetch updates from that central node. Every device also retains a backup copy of the last good software so that if anything goes wrong during the update, say a powerful fault, it automatically recovers by boosting booting into that backup. So yeah, your Starlink update might not be as straightforward as your typical iPhone update, but at least it's still smooth enough for you to barely notice. As you'd expect, Starlink has a complex and intricate telemetry system. A telemetry system is what facilitates data transmission between remote points over a network, which in this case would be the satellites and the fixed ground terminals. According to Christine Huang, head of application software for Starlink, the biggest challenge SpaceX has had to address in regard to fixed ground terminals is how to allocate satellite beams to every spot on Earth that they would want Want to serve. The Starlink engineering team takes into account field of view constraints, radio interference from other satellites including their own, and the number of users that need bandwidth. If you think that setting up Starlink on your boat or RV would give you a spotty internet connection, think again. YouTuber Tech with Shay demonstrated this by mounting Dishy McDishface onto the roof of his van and setting up the router inside. The result? Starlink works relatively well when moving. Christine added that motion does not generally add much complexity to the telemetry system. However, it presents some interesting challenges when it comes to satellites that are out of contact from the ground in parts of their orbit. This means that Starlink's telemetry system has to be resilient to out-of-order and or late-arriving satellites. Moving targets require engineers at SpaceX to solve the altitude determination problem, which is the direction Dishy is pointing at, quickly and continuously. Changes in satellites also change the number of users in a given space spot at any given time, which affects how much bandwidth is needed there. When the Starlink project was launched, SpaceX already had a great in-house telemetry system. The only problem was the existing telemetry system had a core concept of a run, which is a definite start and stop time for any given data set. Starlink didn't fit that model because there are many devices that are always on and can send data out of order or with significant delay. These were some of the first problems that the software engineering team had to solve. Along the way, some of the more interesting challenges that the team has had have been around fault domains and fault tolerance, which is basically making sure that parts of the system have as much availability as possible. If one set of devices emits information that breaks expectations, its impact is limited to the smallest subset of software as possible so that other data sets can continue to be processed. And rather than storing all the data, the software engineering team created a powerful system to aggregate information over time as well as fade out information when it's no longer useful. One very a commendable feature that Starlink has is the smooth and seamless transition between satellites when need be. According to Jeanette Miranda, a laser communications firmware developer at SpaceX, the Starlink software system is built to be super dynamic. With Starlink satellites moving faster than 4 miles per second, users aren't usually connected to the same satellite for more than a few minutes. Each user terminal can only communicate with one satellite at a time. So Starlink's user-to-satellite links utilize electrically steered beams to instantaneously change targets from satellite to satellite, and the software engineers temporarily buffer traffic in anticipation of this handover. Starlink's satellite-to-gateway links use mechanically steered antenna, so the engineers have to account for movement time and make sure they don't let go of one connection until they've securely established the next one. If you're a software engineer or developer, you're probably familiar with the occasional bug getting through every once in a while.
file as you write new software. Now imagine working in an environment where a bug like that could cost your company billions of dollars in damages or worse, lead to serious injury or loss of life. According to SpaceX's Jarrett Farnitano, you need a different mentality to work on such safety-critical software systems. The most important thing is making sure you know how your software will behave in all different scenarios. This affects the entire development process, including design, implementation, and testing. Design and implementation will tend to lean towards smaller components with clear boundaries. This enables those components to be fully tested before they're integrated into a wider system. That said, the full system still needs to be tested, which makes end-to-end -end testing and observability an important part of the process as well. By exposing information about the decisions the software is making in telemetry, the software engineers are able to automate the monitoring of the software. This automation can be used in the development, regression testing, and on the software running on the actual satellites in Starlink's constellation right now. That gives the engineers confidence that their software will work as expected throughout its entire life cycle. We can't say we were late, but it's pretty obvious that running an in-orbit satellite constellation system comes with some out-of-this-world problems. According to Natalie, to manage a large satellite constellation without needing hundreds of human operators, SpaceX relies on software automation running on the ground and on the satellites, as we had previously mentioned. In order to fully test their systems in an end-to-end -end configuration, SpaceX engineers have to integrate hundreds of different software services in a development environment. Another challenge the engineers face in testing is that it's not always possible to test every single capability with one test. For example, if SpaceX engineers want automated tests that exercise the satellite-to-ground communication links, they have to get hardware in the loop, or HITL test beds of the satellites, and then set up a mock ground station with a fixed antenna. From there, the software engineers can run a test where they simulate the satellite flying above the ground station, but they also have to override the software so that it thinks it's always in contact with their fixed antenna. This lets the software engineering team test the full radio frequency and network stack, but doesn't let them test antenna pointing logic. Alternatively, they can run pure software simulations just to test antenna pointing. You must be wondering how SpaceX's quality assurance team validates software developers and engineers since they can't exactly fly up there and check things out. At SpaceX, they don't separate quality assurance from development. Every engineer writing software is also expected to contribute to its testing. The software engineering team generally tries to do as much testing before the payload rocket merge as possible on their high-fidelity hardware test beds. Their test codes and test results are peer-reviewed alongside the the flight code to make sure that they're testing all the right things. SpaceX also has independent engineers developing end-to-end -end tests that stress the whole system. One cool thing about testing for a large-scale satellite constellation is that the software engineers can actually use Canary satellites to test out new features. As the engineers run regression tests on the software to ensure it won't break critical functionality, they can also select a satellite, deploy the new feature, and monitor how it behaves with minimal risk to the constellation. So if after hearing all that you're still interested in becoming a software engineer for SpaceX's Starlink project, I've got some good news for you. The demand for brilliant software engineers and developers is always high. If you want to get a slight idea about what working at SpaceX is like, Christine Huang has you covered. According to her, engineers at SpaceX are both strongly encouraged to identify problems to solve and to own solutions to those problems from end to end. This means thinking through each option not just as an engineer, but as an architect, designer, developer, tester, and user which is believed to lead to more elegant solutions. Software engineers at SpaceX are rewarded for increasing their scope, impact, and autonomy over time. From pioneering interplanetary human travel to providing internet access to marginalized and remote locations around the world, software engineers at SpaceX are clearly some of the most underrated heroes we have in the tech world. When do you think Starlink will be available to the general public? How small or large do you think SpaceX's development team for Starlink is? Will Starlink eventually compete with established ISPs? Let us know all this and more down in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video and hit the subscribe button so we can keep you up to date with everything that's happening in the tech world. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, welcome to the future.